Hey guys, this is Miss Arlequin, and in this video, we're going to look at symbolism in the first two chapters of Lord of the Flies. All right, so symbolism, as you may or may not remember, is when an object, a character, a figure, or a color um, can be used to represent some kind of abstract idea or concept. So when we're talking about an abstract idea, we're talking about the opposite of concrete. Something that's concrete is something that you can hold in your hands. It's real. It's, um, you know, has dimension. Abstract are things like ideas, emotions, concepts, things like freedom, love. Those are things that can't necessarily be quantified. Literally, they can't be held. So an example would be from the Disney movie Dumbo. Dumbo's magic feather is a literal object. But it's not just a feather. It has a deeper meaning than that. The feather represents courage and self-confidence. Once Dumbo truly believes in himself, he doesn't need the feather as his psychological crutch. He's able to fly without the feather. All right, so when you're looking at symbolism in a story, which can be difficult, right? Because how do you really know? what an author is intending to have a deeper meaning, t intending to have a, a symbolic value. But when you think that you're identifying something that is significant in a text, an idea, an object, a person, and you think that there's some kind of deeper meaning, some kind of symbolism, there's a couple of things you want to kind of think through to kind of interpret or analyze that symbolism. So the first thing you want to do is you want to think about the literal meaning of the symbol. So what exactly is a feather literally or if the symbol is a flower rose you know what is a rose exactly it's a flower you want to be able to describe the object of the symbol because the actual description could be key to what's being represented if it is a blooming flower that's a positive object if it's a rotten flower you know that's a little bit more negative it's going to be a more negative symbolism you want to think about how the object of the symbol is used in the story. So is somebody giving the flower to somebody else, to another character? Is the flower blooming um, all by itself and there's no other flowers around? So it's the lone flower that blooms. Is it blooming in a beautiful location or in a like really drab, dreary, solitary lo location? Is the object used in a way different from its normal purpose? So instead of a flower being given to someone, maybe a boy giving it to a girl to represent love, is the flower being used, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but in some other way than what, than what a flower would normally be used as. Think about the relationship between the object or the symbol and a character in the story. So how does the character use the object or feel about the object? Again, it's very simple. If a boy is giving that flower to a girl that they like, then obviously how do they feel about it? It's a representation of their love. They feel positive towards it. Is the object or symbol associated with any emotions in real life or in the story? Again, does the character feel a certain way towards that object? Because that, again, is going to be key to the symbolism. How does the object relate to the events occurring in the story? So like, what if that object wasn't there? Or what role does that object play in what happens in the story? How does it affect the character? How does it affect plot events? And then besides its literal function, what could the object represent in the story? Think of all your answers to the previous questions and kind of synthesize them together to come up with the symbolic meaning. All right, so the object that we're going to be analyzing from Lord of the Flies is the conch shell, which clearly in the first two chapters holds a lot of value. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a series of quotes, and we're going to, for each quote, think about what's being revealed about the conch from this text evidence. So the first evidence comes from page 16. A conch ever so expensive. I bet if you wanted to buy one, you'd have to pay pounds and pounds and pounds. He had it on his garden wall and my auntie. All right, so what are some key descriptions of the conch that I can pull out from this quote? First off, the fact that it's described as being expensive. The fact that somebody had it on their wall. If you hang something on your wall that shows that you value it, that it's significant. 
And the fact that the conch is described as being expensive shows me that it is special. So whatever it's going to symbolize, it's going to be something that is powerful, that has meaning. This is a special object. All right, next, page 16. In color, the shell was deep cream, touched here and there with fading pink. Between the point, worn away into a little hole, and the pink lips of the mouth, lay 18 inches of shell with a slight spiral twist and covered with a delicate embossed pattern. Okay, so what kind of descriptions are being used to describe the shell? Deep cream. That's a very positive description. I really picture a very, like, nice, it's a neutral color. This is not too bright. And then there's a fading pink color. So this is very pretty. Worn away into a little hole and the pink, even think about this, the pink lips of the mouth. To describe it as if there's a mouth kind of makes the conch almost feel as if it's alive because you usually use the mouth to describe a person. A slight spiral twist. So the fact that they're using the word slight which you use to describe something small, and it really makes me think of something delicate, and which is why they also use delicate here. And there's an embossed pattern, which again, gives a little value to it, it's decorated. So this all, in this quote, really reveals how pretty and special the shell is. All right, so now, Take the next three quotes and see if you can do the same thing that I just modeled with the first two. Look for keywords within the quote. Think about really what's being described and what you're learning about the conch, how it's being portrayed. And that's going to lead us to some deeper symbolism.